Events flow through event buses, but nothing happens until a rule is matched. So rules are really at the heart of how you control events in EventBridge. A rule matches incoming events and sends them to targets for processing. A single rule can send an event to multiple targets, which then run in parallel. Rules are based either on an event pattern or a schedule. An event pattern defines an event structure and the fields that a rule matches. One rule can only apply to a single event bus. In this walkthrough, I'm going to create three rules for a fictional cash machine workload. Each of the rules will match different ATM transactions. After creating the rules, I'll send test events and show how to evaluate which rules were matched. So to start with, I'm going to create three different rules. So first of all, from the rules page, I click on create rule. I'm going to call this my rule one. And this is going to be the broadest rule of the three. So I'm going to define an event pattern. And you can define either by service, where if you select that, you can match by different services that flow through AWS, or you can select a custom pattern. And here, this is the broadest pattern. It'll simply select all of the events that come from my ATM application. So after pasting that, I'll click on Save. I want to make sure this is applied to the default event bus in this case. And then because we're testing, I'm going to select a CloudWatch log group as my target, and I'll call this my rule one. And when that's done, I click on create. And at the bottom here, you'll see that we now have this first rule, my rule one created. Now I'm gonna create two more. So let's click on create rule again. And the next one will be called my rule two. Now in this case, I'm going to use a numeric range in the event pattern. So I'll click on the same options here to use a custom pattern. And this has the same attribute as before. We're matching on a source of my ATM app, but now we're going to look at an operator where we're going to test against a range of values. So in this case, this will match any event where the amount attribute is more than 300 by using this numeric operator. So once that's in place, I click save there. And again, I'm going to send this to a CloudWatch log group. This is a good way to test new rules to make sure they're behaving in the way that you expect. Any rule that matches will be sent to this target. And then I'll click create. And again, you can see now we've got two rules that were created. Finally, I'll click one more time for create rule and I'll click create a third rule called my rule three. Again, I'm going to use an event pattern and a custom pattern. And this, this time we're going to do the same thing with source. It'll match anything where the source is my ATM app. But now we're looking at location and using this operator called prefix. So any location in an event that has a prefix of ny-nyc, that will match this event. So now I'll click save there as before. And again, I'm going to create a CloudWatch log group and I'll call this my rule three and then click create. So now we have three rules that have been set up on the event bus, each looking for different variations of transaction events that are going to go through in this fictional app that we have. So to test this, I'm going to send two different events. So to test events, you open up this side menu, click on event buses, and then choose send events. So this is a convenient UI that can help you send events when you want to test to see how your rules are performing. Now we've set everything up on the default event bus, so I'll leave that the same. The source was my ATM app for all of these. The detail type, I'm going to select this as transaction. Now in this first event, I'm going to say that the event is a withdrawal for an amount of $400 with a location of NY, NYC001. Now I want to send two events. So what I can do after I've configured this is click on this duplicate button in the corner. So I click on this. And then I just want to change the detail of the event for the second one. And this time I'm going to make it a withdrawal where the amount is 200 
with a location of CASFO001. So it's slightly different to this one we just created up here. Otherwise, the source and detail types are the same. So I'll send those two events. And what you'll see then is a confirmation in this testing UI that shows the two events were sent successfully. And this section here shows you the full envelope that's then been added to the event by the service. It has the account number, the time, region code, and other attributes. So each of the three rules that I created, we're using CloudWatch logs as a destination. So we can now go and see what the result was of these two test events. My rule one was the broadest rule. It just matched on event source. We sent two events and we can see both events in the logs here. This is the first one. And then the second one is here. So both of these events match this rule because they both contain the source of my ATM app. If I look at the second rule, and this was the one that we used the numeric range, all we see here is there is a match on the event where the amount was 400, it was more than 300. The first event where we set it to 200, it didn't match because it wasn't more than 300 specified in the rule. So that shows that this, this rule is working as expected. Over in the third rule, where this was matching on a prefix of location, this shows that the location matching on MYMYC match this rule and there's only one event in this log. So the other event that had CASFO didn't match this rule. So all three rules here are matching as we expected. So that is how you create rules in EventBridge and then test them by using a destination or target as a CloudWatch log and sending events through the UI. For more learning resources about events, visit s12d.com forward slash about events.